There are plenty of uh, scenarios that the scatter chart inside Power BI can be helpful uh, for visualization, even for some modeling uh, changes. I have explained in another video how a scatter chart can be used with the play axis so that you can see the change of a value throughout the time, like a little animation. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use it to create clusters of values using a clustering algorithm behind the scene, but without writing any code to create those clusters based on a value of a measure or something, and then finally use that as a slicer in other parts of your visualization in Power BI. I'm Reza Rad, and we are going to talk about this in this video. So let's assume that you have a bunch of products, and these products have different sales values, uh, and you have a lot of these products, like hundreds of these products. You do have some categories that you can slice and dice by that, like product categories, colors, some product attributes. Uh, but you also want to create groups of these products based on their sales value. Like you want to know what are the best seller products, what are the products that don't sell that much. Um, and uh, by default, in a business, this is, this is kind of like this information kind of gained throughout the time. Like in the business, everyone knows that product X, Y, and Z are the products that are best sellers, but this is like common knowledge because it, they have been so long in that business. Now, in Power BI, there is a way that you can achieve this using the scatter chart. A scatter chart is the chart that shows you the bubbles and you have x-axis, y-axis, which I'm going to show you. Um, in that chart, you have the ability to create clusters of values. Behind the scene, it uses clustering algorithm, but that information is um, totally um, on the layer beneath it. So you don't really see it. You just set a value of how many clusters you want and you see the result. I'm going to show you, let's go into my screen. So here you see uh, an example of this already built, but I'm going to start and build it from scratch. So what I'll do is I'll add e the scatter chart, and this is the scatter chart, or some people call it bubble chart. I'll add it here, I'll say, uh, what I want to show in the x-axis and y-axis. Now I have two sales amount values. I want to use one of them is in the x-axis, internet sales, another in the y-axis. So we are talking about the business that the sale, va sale values, um, the sales transactions comes through the two different channels, internet, website, things like that, online order, and reseller sales. So uh, in one of the axes I have one, in the other axis I have the other one. Now I also have the product name, English product name, uh, which I'll bring that as the values in here. So what happens with the scatter chart when you have, um, when you have multiple values? Uh, it creates a kind of like distribution of these items um, on the X and Y uh, basis. So X showing internet sales, Y showing reseller sales. What this is telling me is that some products they are good at internet sales and reseller sales. So if you kind of consider this chart in a um, quadrant style, the top right quadrant uh, corner of it is like bestseller in internet sales and reseller sales. Uh, the bottom right bestsellers in internet sales, but not reseller sales. The top left bestsellers in reseller sales, not internet sales and the bottom left is not selling that much good compared to all of these. Now, of course, uh, in this scenario, these products might have different uh, unit price. So we don't um, consider that. Let's assume they all have same unit price and we want to just analyze these based on their sales value. So obviously these products here have better sales values. So I might want to use these products and do some further analysis with it. Like for example, if I go to another page in my report, something like this page, I want to be able to go into this page and only filter it for those particular products to see how their sales trend is and all of those kind of things. So uh, how am I going to group them? 
instead of going and manually selecting them there is a feature in cluster chart which you can actually achieve it by clicking on three dots here you'll see this option that says automatically find clusters now when you go and select this automatic find clusters uh, it asks for what is the cluster column name you want to be this is going to create a new column with this name i'm going to leave this but because i already have one of these i would just call it english product name clusters number two because i already have created one uh, you can add some descriptions in it and you choose how many clusters you want or you can leave it as o2 this will automatically create clusters for you I'll go and say I want five clusters, for example. Um, this is something you can try and, and see what different values would work. For me, I saw five works really nice, so I'll just choose five. As soon as I click OK, what happens behind the scene is that it is going to create a new table, something that you wouldn't see for clustering calculations, and then a new column that is considered that table for doing the calculation using that column as a legend of this chart. So what happens is that when I click on OK, it is going to change the color of this chart. You see now I have these few values with a different color, the values here with a different color, the values here different color. So it actually created those clusters of elements based on their sales values in this case, right? You can change that cluster number and see a different result um, and when you also see here in the right hand side you see that a new column has been generated like this you see there is also another one because i have done this previously once um, so that is why the number two here uh, here you can click on this you can click on edit clusters and that will show you the clusters like this but i would not suggest editing the clusters like this i would suggest if you want to try like a different number with four clusters just go ahead, delete this, and go ahead and create another one that doing that process again, removing this from the, um, from the legend, because you see this is added this uh, field into the legend. Remove this from legend, go to the automatically find clusters again, and change that value to something else and see the result. Now, the beauty of doing this here is that because it created this as a column, I can use this column in any other pages to do my slicing and dicing because here what I see is that this color which apparently is cluster number two is the bestseller cluster so if I want to do any analysis in my other visuals other report pages for these bestseller products I'll just go to that page let's say this is one of those pages um, I'll just make a little bit of space here on the left hand side and I'll bring this cluster as a slicer and I'll go and choose cluster 2 and everything now in this page is filtered for that cluster not only you can do it this way you can also use drill through scenarios uh, which I have explained in another video so that from your scatter chart page you can actually right click on a cluster and drill through into the details of that cluster so really useful option as you saw i haven't wrote any line of code i don't even see that code behind the scene to use to to see what it is going to do the only uh, parameters that i'm changing is the number of clusters and that is for making it simple because power bi is designed for you to work in a simple environment. You are not a data scientist in this scenario. You are just trying to analyze what data is going to do. This is using the k-mean clustering algorithm behind the scene, which is used a lot in a data science process. Let me show you a little bit of um, background information of this as well, because that is also equally important. Now, in another video, I previously talked about DAX query view and a place that you can actually go and write your DAX queries and see the result. We have a function called info view columns. 
now I explained about info view functions previously that gives you metadata information about your um, semantic model. I highly recommend you go and check that out. Very useful. Info view .columns is going to show me all the columns that I have in my semantic model and by the table. I can't even filter it, but what table I want. If I go under dim product, I would be able to see this dim product clusters. Uh, now I have run this before creating this, so this shows me the previous clustering column that I have created. And if I scroll to the right, if that column has any formula, it is going to show me that formula, which is what you actually see this here. So this column is actually a calculated column. It is a column that uh, generate some results based on that clustering. I have already copied and pasted the, uh, the expression of that column in here. And you can see here that this is a calculated column. It is using a lookup value. Um, and this lookup value apparently looks for something called cluster mapping table, a table, a new table in my semantic model that I did not have before. After this clustering, this table is created. It is a hidden table. I cannot see it. This is also another benefit of using this info functions because then I can go and use this function info.view.tables. This will show me all the tables. Now, if I go to the result set of that, I see all the tables that I have in my semantic model. Customer, employee, as you can see, I'm using the default date table. That is why there are lots of um, uh, the default tables, date tables here. And then the last table, the last table in this list is clustered mapping table, a hidden table that I do not see in my semantic model right here, because as you can see, the is hidden column of that is true, meaning that I don't see it, but this exists. And if I go to the expression side of it, this is a table also created using an expression and in that expression, it is using a k-mean clustering algorithm, which is really nice and fantastic to see how it works. This is the expression for that, uh, for that table creation, which um, first creates groups of values based on internet sales, reseller sales, and English product name, the fields that I have used to create my clustering, my uh, scatter chart visual. And then it uses those and pass those information with the parameter five that I mentioned to the k-mean clustering, which is a really nice way of understanding how this all works out. But as I said, this all happens behind the scene. You don't really write any code. All you do is just go to the visual, click on that three dots and say, automatically find clusters and use the clusters values. This is really helpful for um, data analysts, for someone who don't have data science um, experience or data science knowledge, but still wants to use some of these easy to use machine learning features in Power BI, such as clustering. Uh, I hope this video helps you and you go and use it in your Power BI implementation. Uh, we have weekly videos about Microsoft Fabric and Power BI in this channel. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. I'm Rosarat. Until the next video, bye.